Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. It's time for another daily dose of dismal Disney. Disney in trouble because some Disney employees are protesting Bob Iger's demand to return to the office four whole days a week. Now, if you remember, we covered this before. This was on February, I think, 10th he made the announcement. Before the investor call. Mm. So this wasn't like in, as a response investor call. So he made this announcement before he did the investor call when they announced they had to cut 5.5 billion. Yeah. Before they announced they had to lay off 7,000 people. All that was made uh, days before. Yeah. So. So anyway, uh, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about this because this has been a sticking point with a lot of employees. They basically got used to being able to work from home remotely mm -hmm. for the last couple of years. And now they're dragging their feet about coming back to the office. And look, I, I I can see both sides of it better than most people because I have done both. Mm -hmm. uh, geeking and vouch. I've, I've worked actually uh, a couple of companies. I've worked both in office and at home. Uh, for a number of years, but I had to earn the right to be able to work at home. Right. I had to work in office for three or four years before they trusted me enough to let me work remote. And then they just got rid of you. Then they just got rid of you. Yeah, it's, it's easier to get rid of people, and we'll talk about that too. I think this kind of dovetails into it. It's easier to get rid of people that you don't have to face day after day mm -hmm. because they're not there, and you kind of forget they're even working there, and then it's like, oh, we'll just you know send them an email and... They're gone. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. And I'm gonna be honest, when you work at home, I mean, your productivity probably isn't where it's gonna be when you work on site. I mean, if we're just gonna be honest and cut to the bullshit. Yeah, there are a lot of distractions. I mean, the biggest problem I had, and we'll, we'll talk more about this. I'll tell you what, tell you what, we'll, we'll have a conversation about working at home. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over uh, 294, almost 295,000, almost 300,000. We want to get the 300,000 subs. Thank you for the support. We do talk about pop culture. We talk about Disney having worked in and around the company for a number of years. Some of that time uh, freelancing on Disney projects from home, mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not. Um, so, yeah, we'll... we'll uh, Talk about the, the this. The difference was those jobs were were, were, were freelance from the get go. Yes, that's that's the difference. It's piecework. So the the thing with a lot of freelance is if it's not hourly, it's piecework. So you get paid by the project, and you don't get paid until the project is complete. Therefore, you have an incentive to complete your work versus just collecting a paycheck every week. Right. You know. So the pandemic came and a lot of jobs got sent home. The ones that were lucky. I want to put this out with Disney. Yeah. So a lot of the people that got to work from home were the lucky ones because the people that were theme park people, they were told you were either laid off or then eventually some of them were furloughed or whatever. They they were let go. Um, they had to go home. They had to work the food pantries. They had to, to hope that their unemployment, which a lot of people didn't even get, mm -hmm. all this stuff was going on. And then they had to go back. The ones that were lucky enough to get called back had to go back, um, even when the pandemic was still going on, and they had to work full time in person. Uh, a lot of them were happy to go back. These people have been, um, not all of them, I'm sure some of them probably were hired to be work from home, but a lot of them, you know, were moved work to work from home. When the pandemic hit, it has been over enough that most people got back to work for a while now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most people have been, but a lot of companies now are, are really cracking the, the whip. No, no pun intended mm. here. Amazon is telling people they have to come back three whole three days. Three days a week, four three. days a week. And that's what you're bitching about. Some people have to work six or seven days a week and they work for in person every day. And they've been. There are people that, yeah, are working yeah, a lot of hours, a lot of days, and they've had to... I feel so bad for the cast members that had to work during the pandemic behind the plastic shields with the masks on, with the gloves on, having to wipe everything down, being in the early pandemic. And we didn't know how bad this thing was going to get. And so they were like, oh, my God, am I going to you know, catch this thing and die or what's mm -hmm. going to happen to me? And uh, but I have to do it because I need my job, you know, and then yeah. having to enforce rules with belligerent. Uh, guests who would come in and you know spit on them, spit on literally spit on them because they were saying, "Hey, you got to wear a mask because that that's the rule." People We've got gotten, punched, they got hit, they I mean, they got punched, spit on, kicked, etc. It wasn't even it wasn't even Disney's rule. It was the state of Florida's like, "Yeah, you can open, but you got to do." Well, this, then this, for this, a while, their Disney did mandate it when when the state did not. Now here's the thing: they came back to work, and and now people are bitching. Because they have to go back three to four days a week. Now, I get it. You don't have to do everything you know, in, in office, which is why they're not making you go back full time in office. Yeah. However, what I have to wonder is, is Disney thinking people aren't doing 
their work because yes. Bob Iger being Bob Iger and being how he usually tends to 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 lean, he would know when he announced this it was going to be you know big time backlash. It was going to cause a black eye. Yet he still announced it. Then later they announced five point five billion in cuts with one billion you know in like their overhead for like their S and P and all mm -hmm. that. There they announced it for that. So that tells me that they think that people would be more productive. They could be more, you know, nimble, streamlined, productive if people were in office so they can actually watch them work and make sure they're getting the work done than if they're at home. Yeah, that that is probably what's going on here, because I think, you know, look, and, you know, you can make a case either way. There are people who work very effectively at home. I agree. Um, now, I'm not saying everybody that's being called back is not working. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, a lot of people, if you're not used to working at home now, in my case, I actually freelanced for a number of years before. I went to work from home, so I had kind of the, you know, schedule down and, you know, everything I had to do to make sure I got stuff done. But I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, one of the biggest problems I had when I first started working from home years ago was, and it's no offense to my friends and family, but my friends and family did not understand just because I'm home doesn't mean I'm actually home. Yeah, and he's talking about me too. Um, but he's trying not to get to get glared at. No, no, no. This is actually before we got well, married. Well, I mean, but even after you got married, when you went to one place and they let you go to working from home, it was hard because we had little, little children. Yes. And, and they don't understand. Just pretend dad's not here. And they don't also understand. And sometimes, you know, in, in normal jobs, you can ask off and say, hey, I need to take a few, I need to take this day off or you know, half a day or whatever to go take my kid to the doctor or whatever. What happened is this place, even before they let him go work from home, even though he was salaried, if he took off to go to the dentist for two hours they he was supposed to make that time up yeah which is not yeah. really kosher but they were ridiculous about it like you were even you, you never did not make up your time you always, always you always, always did it you always yeah. did your work yep and i'm sure for a lot of people they do their work it's just that they might not be able to do it um as effectively or as you know well then they're, that's the only thing they're focusing on yeah and i think i think what is going to happen is they focus on results but yeah i had i mean i had cases where i had friends uh you know, come over and they were like, hey, it's Friday night. Let's come over and cry. And they wanted to you know, play video games. And I literally I remember I remember one weekend I had a bunch of friends come over and they wanted to play video games and they went into my living room and they started playing video games and computer games without me because I had a deadline. I had to I had to get this project done by Monday or I couldn't pay my rent that month. I mean, this is back when my early 20s and I had to kind of like explain to them like, guys, I let them play, you know, whatever. But I'm like, I'm not actually here i'm at work this is so, before me because i've yeah. been like out <laughs> you know? well, no, i don't want to i don't want to be a dick i'm like well for them it's a friday night for me it's another work day you know and there were there were times even before we got married uh you know again doing the freelance thing i would pull all-nighters and you remember that like i would pull mm -hmm. all-nighters to get projects done but the difference was i knew if i didn't get that project completed I didn't get paid. I wasn't on salary. And so these people don't always give you, um, you know, uh, time frames that are, you know, actually reasonable. Work. Yes. yes. Yeah. They yes. don't always give reasonable time frames. So that being said, uh, back to this, you're still getting to work from home, you know, a day or two to how many days a week you work from home. Um, Amazon, you know, two days a week or whatever you work from home. So you're still getting a split, you know, going on there. Um, I don't think it would even have mattered if Iger said three days a week. They would have complained about that. And while I understand, you know, a lot of people do work from home, get a lot of stuff done, and I and I completely see where people are coming from. I yeah. do. I also think that a lot of people had to go back to work, and it's kind of shitty of some of the entitled behavior and the comments that were made about having to go back to work when their job was a work in person job to begin with. Yeah, if you were hired. With the expectation that you were going to, you know, punch a clock, go to an office, you know, five days a week or whatever. The fact that you only have to go in four days a week is kind of a blessing because mm -hmm. you signed up to be there five days a week. Um, but it's interesting. This is this whole culture shift that has happened in the last couple of years. Um, and now we've even got fortune, fortune, which is supposed to be all about the numbers. Fortune, who their writers don't want to continue to work from home. Right. They're, <laughs> so. they're like the return to the office could be the real reason for the slump in productivity. Here's the data to prove it. They're basically saying people don't buy it. Sorry, people are sad that they have to go back to the office. Um, and I think everybody thought that there was going to be this massive cultural shift. Everybody was going to work from home, um, and that's just, it's just not realistic. Not everybody can do. It. I mean, okay, theoretically, theoretically, we have the technology right now that anybody 
working a, a computer-based job can work from home, theoretically. But we're dealing with people, people with different circumstances and people with different levels of, of discipline. And not everyone is going to have the discipline to be able to separate the, the work and home life. You know? well, my takeaway to this from this chart is I'm looking at the output, which is the blue line and mm -hmm. the hours worked. OK, which is the green line. OK. Yeah. And even way before the pandemic, they're way down here. You know, I'm like, so my takeaway is people are just phoning it in. Yep. You know, now we're going back to normal. So basically they're getting way more output, supposedly, with way less hours worked. Uh, my takeaway as a boss would be like, well, you're to, you, you could have been working a lot harder in the office, but you're too busy sitting around the water cooler yucking it up with your friends, okay. taking smoke breaks. So that's what I think, personally. That's what I think is going on here. I think, and this is a lot of companies, this is kind of what happened with Twitter. This is what's happened with, uh, happening with a lot of these uh, blogs, these, you know, the, you know, Geek news blogs, whatever they actually moved them. Said, well, you can move if you want to, but you don't have to. Uh, people were like, oh, they're trying to bust the unions. No, because in a lot of cases, what's going on is that they're unionizing so they can work from home. They're unionizing so they don't have to give the forty hours a week, whatever. It has nothing to do with the poor working conditions. They basically just want to work from home. Well, it sounds like they, they they got less done when they were in office because they were probably too busy like wasting their time. Well, I'll tell you a story. Uh, I'm not going to say who it was, but I know somebody who worked someplace and they every day this person would, you know, they, their job was to fix um, instruments for, you know, uh, we'll say aviation purposes. OK, and it wasn't me. No, no. And that was their job. And this person was a hard worker. And so every day they'd come in and do like, you know, five instruments in a day which got them in trouble with their their boss or the foreman and the people that worked with them because they would come in and do one a day, even though they were totally capable of doing several more a day, they'd do one a day and kibitz and goof off all day. So what the what they all would do was basically, you know, one a day, what, what this person turned around and did was do several the first day, stick them in his drawer and pull one out every, you know, every day and then, oh, look, I did one. Not because they couldn't do it or they didn't want to do it, but because they got so much pressure from everybody around them for making them look bad that it made the working environment very negative for that person. Yeah. Because that, they were a worker and they got shit done. That happens a lot with union employees. Basically, if they find out that, you know, everybody's got to be basically at the same level, right? Because Yeah. And this person came yeah. in, was a worker, and yeah. made them look bad. So they, they kind of like, you know, made the working conditions less than favorable until they fell into line to, you know, like the rest of them. So they could, they were all capable of doing several a day. Yeah. That would have been part that was what they were supposed to be there for. But, you know, a couple people wanted to be lazy that were higher up and then it would look bad on them. So they basically pulled everybody underneath them into doing very little also instead of them stepping up their game. So I think I think what's going on here is that these companies are well, one, the money is running out. The free money is running out, especially in tech and media. And uh, and I think it's also a domino effect. I think that in some cases, these companies aren't necessarily hurting financially. They could continue things as they have been continuing them. But I think they're looking at other companies that have finally gotten the balls to toss some of their employees that are underperforming overboard and just be like, yeah, no, you can't work from home. Sorry. This is That's a, how you get rid of it's it. It's a litmus it. test. Who signed, this who signed this petition to not have to work? You know, oh, well, you know, in office. That is exactly the same with like, you know, looking at Image Comics with their their union or whatever they did. And again, you know, people listening, I'm not anti-union if the working conditions are poor. I'm if there's a reason to be a union, then I... Right. If there's a reason to unionize because you're totally being taken advantage of, like I think in Amazon's case, because they're working people to the bone and all that. But, you know, I, I don't believe that's the case here. Because uh, I've known a lot of people that work at Disney. I don't I don't believe that's the case at all. But I think they're like, hey, uh, this is how we, we have to get rid of employees. We have to fire a bunch of employees. This is going to help us make that decision so much quicker. Who's willing to come back into the office and who isn't? Well, a couple things I think are at play here with Disney, too. Um, Bob Chapek at the last, uh, the Q4 earnings call for 2022 yeah. had said that they were looking, there was a team in place. They were trying to cut their overhead expenses. Um, they said that they were probably gonna have to let people go. And they were also, you know, freezing, uh, travel. Like if you could, the people are going to conventions or taking meetings that unless it was authorized by, you know, way high up, you weren't to go to spend the extra money to waste the time. Any things that can be done by like, zoom or whatever you're required to do it. So they already saw they were trying to cut their expenditures and they were trying to, you know, stop people from flitting off all the time and stuff yeah. like that. So that was under JPEG. 
Then we had Bob Iger come in and they basically announced they're cutting $5.5 billion. Part of their cuts was because of uh, Nelson Peltz and the uh, investors breathing down their neck about why they're not profitable. So now they're able to use this opportunity to make themselves, as Chapek said, more nimble. Basically, everything Chapek said they got him in trouble for, Iger's got to do the same thing, but he's doing it in a nicer way. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. And he's also got the excuse now to say, well, because of macroeconomic. That's what Chapek used too. It didn't work. <laughs> so now 2,300 people are signing this petition. And what got me is like, what they're saying, okay? They're like, it's likely to have unintended consequences that cause long-term harm to the company. And this is across ABC, 20th Century Studios, Marvel, Hulu, yeah. Pixar. They're only getting 2,300 people across all of that signing this. Yeah, and that's out of 200,000. It's like point, like it's like one point something percent, you know? Yeah. Well, again, they're they're easy fires at this point. They said they're going to cut cut seven thousand seven thousand jobs. There's, you know, you're more than a third of the way there. And they don't have to cut. Just be like, okay, well, if you're going to resign, then then this mandate will will make will will people who are going to resign are going to resign. That's why I didn't, you know, they made it four days. Yeah. And then Disney doesn't have to lift the finger, and they can't say you fired me. Well, you resigned because you didn't like the mandate. That's what they did with. uh, I think it was. um, uh, Geo Media with AV Club and stuff like that. They're like, you know, I think they were trying to break up the union, honestly, but they were also like, hey, we're moving to California. Uh, you don't, you know, you have a job there if you want to move, but if you don't want to move, you know, well. Yeah. And, and they come out squeaky clean. You just, you chose not to, you chose not to move. It was a you business chose decision. Not to yeah, come back. you chose not, that was on you. You, you said, hey, I don't want to move to California. We offered you a job there. And they're like, well, wait, you're paying us the same as you're paying us in, I think they're in Chicago. They're like, we can't afford to live in L.A. for what? Well, I'm sorry. That's the job. And if you don't want it, then, you know. I I love this next part. Forced resignations among some of our most hard to replace talent. You're all replaceable. Just ask the parks people. And vulnerable communities. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, While dramatically reducing. You know what that means. While dramatically reducing productivity, output, and efficiency. So basically what's going to happen, and this this happened with Netflix too. Remember when they they shut that blog down? And it wasn't like, hey, they shut the blog down, a bunch of people were out of work. It was like, hey, they shut the blog down and minorities were most affected. You know, and you should feel awful. It wasn't like- Yeah, but their stock went up. Their stock went up because they were like, good, good, because it was a waste it was of money. A stupid, it was a stupid thing. It was a waste of money. So they're yeah. basically trying to argue that, you know, it's going to it's gonna re- reverse their growth because basically they're like, oh, there's an employee shortage and they're going to jump ship to their companies, which is probably true yeah. and probably it's going to happen. But Disney also needs to get rid of 7,000 people. Yes. And so so the Bobs, they were going to get rid of you anyway. So the Bobs from office space, except this time you're getting one at a time. You're not getting both Bobs. Right. But what I'm saying is they need to cut 7,000 people. You're, there's 2,300 people that, that, that we, don't yeah. want to, we don't want to do this. Okay, fine. The mandate stays. Well, how many, then I don't think everybody that signed the petition is actually going to leave, but a bunch of them will. That's how many more people they don't have to worry about paying unemployment to. Remember, remember all those people that were going to rage quit because Disney was building a, a compound in Florida and they were going to move some of the Imagineers to Florida. Mm-hmm. And they're still building that compound. They in still Florida. are. It just got pushed way back. Yeah. The thing is, it never was going to be done when they said because they're just they're just now starting it. It, it was supposed to be done by like like this year. Is when it was supposed to be done. <laughs> so they're never going to well, do that anyway. There's still a giant hole in Epcot. Like they only, what are they going to put there? They even know what they're going to put there. Uh, well, yeah, they're supposed they're working on stuff, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, the point is, is that you know they, people were going to quit, and people did quit, by the way, uh, because they thought they were going to be moved to like Nona, and then they d- didn't do it. So those people are probably salty, and I can't blame some of those people. That's not before that happened with um, DC Comics too. They moved DC Comics out of New York to California, and they're like, "Hey, you have a job if you want to come to California." But part of the reason they did it, my understanding was. They were trying to get rid of some of the people in the New York offices. They'd been there forever, and they're like, "Well, we're trying to go more Hollywood." So, you know, these people, we know they're not going to move because they're lifelong New Yorkers. Oh, whoopsie doopsie! What you can't move to California? Can't just drop everything you're doing and buy a house in L.A.? Oh, well, there's a bunch of jobs cut without half the pan employment. Yes, that's that's what's going on here. So. I'm like, oh, what I was going to point out was the human resources are trying to say, oh, I would not dare workers to choose between returning to office and their jobs. And it's like, but Disney's going to lose 7,000. They need to cut 7,000 people anyway. And, they're, and, and they have the, um, the different shareholders breathing down their neck. Disney's trying to be more, um, they're trying to be more effective. They're trying to cut costs, but to have more profitability and productivity. They feel if you bring people back to the office, they're going to be more productive. I don't necessarily agree with that, given that chart. It seems like... 
they're just going to do what I, that story I mentioned, you know, not do jack shit and bully everyone around them and not do jack shit. I apologize to anybody whose name is jack shit. But um, I'm sure somebody's name is jack I'm sure somebody's name is that. And they're talking about how employees feel betrayed. Yeah, I've just got. That, this, is where, this is where you lose me. Yeah, they're like, workers feel like. They did a really good job of demonstrating trust and showing up showing up during the pandemic. Coming back to the office through a mandate, a mandate. They didn't got, show up. They stayed at home. They stayed at home. Coming back to the office through a mandate seems punitive. And it certainly isn't something most workers were consulted well, on. Well, you don't have to consult with the employees. Oh, my God. Well, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. These are awfully entitled people. Okay. So, yeah, beyond that, though, um, a, ma- a mandate to come back to work or you lose your job, a mandate, do what we say or you lose your job. Uh, you know, go back to the job that you used to be in person, the dude in the first place. This is a temporary thing. You were well made aware it was a temporary thing. We're bringing you back in and you still get to have an extra day at home, but it's still a temporary thing. And we have to stop that because it's costing us money. You didn't consult me first. Yeah. Disney employees were not consulted on the mandate. They wouldn't be. You I, look, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm not trying to be that guy. Okay, I've been on both sides of the desk. But when you are an employee, for the most part, you are at the mercy of your employer. And I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's the way it is. Everybody else had to fucking go back to work. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to use many F words. I apologize. People went, people, that's, that's a YouTube thing. People went back to work at Walmart and they went back to work at uh freaking Some people never got to leave. The hot can you imagine the hospital people? Hospital you know? people? I mean, can you imagine how scary that is every day at the hospital during pandemic when we didn't know what the hell was going on? Yeah. You didn't know if you're gonna they, die they or had what? to they had to go back to work, but you're betrayed. I love this. It's talking about um they're saying, I think everyone adjusted really well the flexibility. Basically, we got used to getting able to sit our butts at home and do what we wanted to. And we got used to that. And it was kind of nice. And we really liked getting paid to sit at home and do our work from there. So we adjusted to that flexibility. And now for all, all that to go away suddenly is scary for a lot of people. Ask the cast members in the park how scary that is. When they're getting spit on and punched during pandemic times because they have to go to work in person. But, you, you know, you get to sit at home. You didn't get to lose your job like all these other people did. You got to get paid the whole time. And, and you, it was a temporary thing. You were made clear it was a temporary thing. And now that you, that's ending, you're going to sit here and, and, and complain about it. That's what I have a problem with. Yeah. They're they like, didn't even consult me first. That attitude is what I'm taking issue with. I don't think they ever said it was permanent. They said this is basically this is how we get by. We get through during the pandemic. You know, I have to wonder if on some level, if this isn't playing into why we had this big push. Everybody was like, oh. We can do animation. We're going to bet uh-huh. heavy on animation. Because it can be done from it home. It can be done at home. And then we had two things going on. One, a lot of the animation being produced didn't perform. It didn't you know, give a return on investment. And it's very expensive to produce. But also, everybody wanted to work at home forever. Well, here's the and, thing. There are some jobs that can be done at home. Yeah. And there's a lot of things that can be done at home, yes. And a lot of those people who do those jobs for a living understand when they're hired that they're doing it from home. These jobs, I think for most of what they're talking about, were jobs that that they weren't supposed to be done at home. It was a temporary thing. They got We got used to that flexibility. Now we don't want to give it up. Yeah, because you used to work in office. And now they're asking you to come back. They're like, that they're saying that, that they feel forced out and that they plan to voluntarily resign if it goes into effect. Well, good. That makes it easy for them to cut the 7,000 people they need to cut, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. And that's exactly it. That's why they're doing it. You know, that's why. I, look, I've worked at companies before. What they do is they basically... You know, it's kind of like kind of like getting somebody to break up with you. You don't want to be the bad guy. So you just passive aggressively act like a dick until they're like, you know what? This isn't working out anymore. So the petition apparently is also asking Iger to allow remote work for employees who want it, which who isn't going to want to do that. Right. And invest more heavily in technology and training. So spend a lot of money to make collaboration and asynchronous work easier. Spend a lot of money to make it easier for our butts to stay at home. That's basically what they're saying. Go work someplace else. Oh, wait, everybody. And they, they mentioned it in the article, like everybody is requiring the same thing now. Amazon's requiring it now. Because it was required before the pandemic. Starbucks is required. I'm like, how do you? So apparently we're not talking about the baristas. Oh, right? no, no, no. The riffraff have to go work in person. Yes. It's the elite, the elite special people. The marketing people. people and the PR people and the frankly, and look, this is coming from a guy who worked in marketing for years. I worked as a journalist for years. 
Uh, you are the most expendable. But then they said, <laughs> you are. But then it says the company should do more to bring employees together in person through networking, training, and town hall events. So the fun things we should get together for. Sitting in Zoom calls in an office four days a week while your coworkers, partners, stakeholders, and vendors and customers do the same in different parts of the world does not meet the core need. There's a value in being together, but we also need to look forward and embrace new paradigms that add value. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, yeah. It's the attitude. It's not even yeah, what they're saying either. because yes, a lot of stuff can be done from at home, but the entitled the, the entitled attitude is what I have problem with. You're still getting to stay home extra time than you did before. <sighs> Flexibility at Disney felt like a fresh start, they said. Now it feels like we're moving backwards. Backwards into more profitable times, probably, because people are going to actually have to do their work. Again, they wouldn't be doing this if they weren't trying to find people to cut without having to pay unemployment. And Iger, knowing how this works and knowing how the backlash goes better than Chapek, he wouldn't do it unless he really thought there was decreased productivity and they needed to make some changes because they're cutting so much. They need the people they have left to actually work. Well, according to Fortune, productivity has never been better. You yeah. work less hours, they're more productive when you're at home. So you're just wasting their time when you're at the company. Yeah, yeah right, right. I mean, just get rid of people who don't do jack shit and hire people that do. Well, yeah, because again, that makes you look bad. It's like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You got all your work done in three hours, but we were paying you to be here for eight hours. Technically, you should have gotten twice as much work done when you were here. But yeah, what were you doing? You were, you know, I mean, I used to run into that problem too. And often, I was actually more productive. Uh, the one job at home because I used to have people come into my office and bug me and it got to the point where I used to work through lunch and it got to a place where I actually left the building and I'd go sit in a parking lot in my car and eat because I couldn't get anything done anyway mm -hmm. and I didn't want to be bothered <laughs> or I'd shut my door and just be like yeah I'm not here you know so anyway uh, anyway we're gonna wrap this up yes uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants guys we'll talk later bye